purpose um, of your study, the problem for your study, and general research questions. But in this tutorial, like I said, we're going to develop solid researchable questions that truly reflect the design that you chose um, and also identify the variables um, that you're going to study. So we're going to talk about operationalizing your um, variables and defining them. So let's get started. LaFontaine and Bartos in 2002 wrote a book and they talked about developing good research questions and they said a good research question has the following characteristics. First of all, it asks about the relationship or the difference between two or more variables. So you, you're actually stating, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the relationship between variable A and variable B. Or I want to know, is there a difference between these two groups? Um, so you're clearly identifying the variables and if there's a relate, if you're looking at relationship or difference. You're clearly stating the question and you're stating um, a research question in the form of a question. It's never ever a statement. You're always asking is there a difference or what is the difference? Um, so you're using interrogatory questions or interrogatory words and um, questions. Next, um, your research question, a good research question is te testable. That's you're able to collect data um, in an ethical, the next characteristic is in an ethical and moral manner. You can actually collect the data, um, implement your research. Also, this one's really important. Your research question or questions need to be specific and restricted in scope. You're not aiming to solve the world's problems. You want to write things that are very clear, precise, and concise. When um, I visit the Grand Canyon, I like to take pictures. But when my husband visits the Grand Canyon, he really likes to take video. Um, and so I liken your questions unto this. Make sure that your questions are snapshots like I take snapshots of the Grand Canyon and it's not a video of the entire Grand Canyon. So very, very specific, restricted in scope and identify exactly what's to be solved. We're now going to talk about this a little bit more specifically and not quite so abstractly. Sometimes I find the best way to make things very specific is through examples. So we're going to look at some examples of research questions and we're going to talk about are these good or are they bad examples. Um, based on the criteria that we just looked at. The first um, research question is, will there be a significant decrease in the depression scores of adults involved in group therapy as opposed to adults involved in individual therapy? So look at this question. Think about the characteristics of a good research question. Is it limited in scope? Um, are the is, are we asking about relationship or difference? Um, are we asking, are we, have we identified our variables in our population? This one's probably a fairly good question. Um, we know specifically what the variables are, we're looking at are. Um, the dependent variable is depression scores. The independent variable is the type of therapy where we know the, who the population is. It's adults. Um, we could potentially be a little bit more specific, but, uh, um, but overall adults is a specific population and we're asking about a decrease. So overall it's a good question. Um, the next question is, is our college freshmen in public universities indifferent in their academic achievement compared to college freshmen in private institutions? So think about, are your variables well defined here? Um, I would say no. What What is indifference and what is academic achievement? Are we looking at math grades? Um, how do you measure indifference? So I have some concerns probably in this question about the dependent variable and it not being very specific. The next um, question is, is will there be a di or will there be an increase in reading achievement among first grade students taught using the new language approach as opposed to students um, being taught using the basal approach? Again, are my variables specific? They're fairly specific. Reading achievement could be better defined as a reading score of some type. Um, I know my population is first grade students. I know that the independent variable is type of um, language arts approach to teaching. So overall, it's, it's, fair, it's a fairly well written question. 
Now, let's take a poorly written question and talk about how you can make it a more well-written question, thus making the characteristics of a good research question very, very um, literal rather than, again, being abstract. Let's say as a researcher, now this um, specific example is derived from um, La Fontaine and Bartos. Let's say as a researcher you pose the following question. You want to know what is the effectiveness of parent education um, for parents with problem children. Is this a well-written, clear, and focused research question? No, it's not. And you can probably identify several um, concerns. First of all, what is effectiveness? Um, how is that being defined? What is parent education? And um, what is problem children? By simply operationally defining these words, we can make this research question more specific, more clear, and more focused. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, we are going to operationally define some of those unclear constructs and variables. Now, an operational definition um, is a definition that tells the tells other people the process that's going to be used to measure, observe, or define the variable or construct. So, if I look at parent education, I'm not just looking at any parent education, I'm going to um, look at a specific parenting education program